Hey there, let's talk about the newly announced Canon C400. And it just got announced a few hours ago, so if you are watching this at a later time, please keep that in mind in the context and the timeline of making this video because more content will come out about this camera and we'll learn more about it. And I'm sure all of our thoughts, feelings, and uh, opinions about the camera will change, so just keep that in mind. Now, I do wanna say that I've been a Canon shooter for several years now, and I've used most of their cameras, all their mirrorless cameras, the R3, the R5, the R6 Mark II, the R7, the R8, etc. I've also owned and used a lot of their cinema cameras, the C100 Mark II, the C200, the C70, and of course the Canon R5C. So I still own and operate Canon, and I have a lot of experience in their ecosystem, so I have a lot of thoughts and opinions, of course, about the C400. Now, if you aren't familiar with this channel, welcome. My name is Josh. I cover camera gear from every possible manufacturer. So I am not just a Canon shooter. I own other camera brands. I do cover that on this channel, but I do have a lot of experience in Canon. So I do have a lot of stuff to talk about with this. So let's get in talking about the camera, give you some specs and some information, and then we'll get into sort of my thoughts about the camera, uh, how it fits in the market, how it fits in their lineup, the price value, that sort of stuff. Okay, so starting off, it has, they're saying a brand new 6 6K backside illuminated stacked full frame sensor. I know that was a lot to say. Now, this is a big deal because this is Canon's, I mean, it's sort of their first RF mount full frame camera in the cinema world. I mean, we do have the R5C, but it is full frame and RF mount. And before that, the only other full frame cinema camera was the C500 Mark II. Now, the fact that it's backside illuminated will help with low light performance and the stack sensor will help with quicker readout. So having all that is awesome. Now, I think the headline feature for the C400 is the fact that it has a triple base ISO. Now, I don't know if there's other cameras out there that have that, maybe they do, but I haven't seen anyone talking about them recently or they're in cameras that are not in my world. So 800, 3200, and 12,800. And that's all gonna be if you're shooting in like C-Log2, C-Log3, and RAW. Now, I personally love having that middle second base ISO of like 3200 or 4000, like in the R5C it's 3200. I find that to be really helpful in a lot more situations than that 12,800. But the fact that it has a third base ISO, it's weird to say that, of 12,800 really makes this camera be more competitive with a lot of the Sony cameras that have that second base all the way up there at 12,800. Now in RAW, if you're shooting on the C400, you can shoot 6K up to 60 frames per second in full frame, and you can also shoot 4K 120 in Super 35. That's all in RAW. If you are shooting in the XF formats, you can shoot up to 4K 120, and it is oversampled 4K in all the XF formats as well. Uh, I don't know about the 4K 120, but I, I would hope that it is. Now, it also includes Canon's uh, Cinema Raw Lite. It should come in all the flavors, HQ, STLT, and 12-bit. There are also some new codecs they introduced in the camera. There's the XF HEVCS and XF AVCS. Basically, uh, there's you know H.264 and H.265 versions. These are gonna be MP4 wrappers instead of the uh, MXF wrappers, but it'll have more metadata, and that's one of the advantages of using MXF. So there will be some more codec options available as well. They did incorporate dual pixel autofocus version two, which was found in the mirrorless cameras. This is an upgrade for their cinema division, but it isn't really like a new autofocus system, but it is new for the cinema operating system. So it will have some subject detection modes. If you aren't familiar with the Canon cinema operating system, it has subject detection for humans, but not animals and stuff like that. So it will have some animal detections, although I think it's only limited to like cats and dogs at launch, which is weird. Hopefully they start adding animals and birds and vehicles and all that kind of stuff, but we'll see. Anyways, it's not a new autofocus system, but it is new for Canon cinema. So not a huge upgrade, but it is an upgrade. So let's take a look around the camera and talk about some of the physical stuff going on here. All right, so first taking a look at the front, of course we have that beautiful full frame RF mount. They're also gonna be selling a PL to RF adapter that will bolt on. There are those little four bolts that are on there, similar to like on the C70 for using the speed booster. There's also a 12 pin lens control, which is on the bottom left, and that will control the servo zooms for some of their fancier lenses. That's kind of cool to see. Onto the right side of the camera, we have the audio selectors and they actually move the audio controls over to the left side, which I think makes more sense for a lot of people. There's an ethernet port and the rosette for the side grip. The interesting thing about the side grip is it has a USB-C connector, which is different, but the grip looks like most of the other Canon cinema cameras. Moving on to the top, we have a good amount of mounting holes. I'm sure this will take a top plate really well for mounting all sorts of stuff. We also have a hot shoe right on top of the camera for their electronic accessories like the Tascam XLR unit and probably microphones and some other stuff. Maybe some more stuff is coming in the future. There's also a new top handle that also has the hot shoe and there's a new 3.5 inch LCD screen with slightly different hardware to mount it. 
But the cool thing here is it also has a USB-C connector. And in the Canon announcement, they said that this might open up to third-party manufacturers. So it'd be really cool to see if there were other options for EVFs, you know, um, different monitors, stuff like that. Like I already am in my head thinking, you know, the Blackmagic uh, EVF or the um, Red DSMC3 small HD monitor. If you could plug that in, that would be super cool to have third-party accessories. So getting onto the back, there are lots of connections. I think that's one of the main reasons you might want to pick up a C400. Uh, I do like how they are positioned on the right-hand side. I think this is a cool trend that's going on. We have the battery stuff on the left and then all the connections on the right. So we have two SDI ports, which is great. We have a 12G and a 3G. We have two mini XLR inputs. Uh, so I'm sure some people have opinions about that, but I personally don't mind mini XLRs that much. There's two DIN connectors for time code, gen lock and return video that are located down there. There's also a DC power in, which is a, a bigger, more burly connection than the little barrel port that's on like the C70, for example. There's also USB-C headphone jack, 3.5 mic jack, the HDMI. Another thing is there's a new battery. Uh, they're going to ship with the BPA60N. You can use the regular BPA batteries, but if you do, you this won't uh, let you use the new um, hot shoe or uh, that's on the top handle or the 12-pin lens connector on the front. There's also the accessory mounting, accessory mounting bracket area on the back, which uh, could put the um, the expansion pack on the, the C500 Mark II and C300 Mark III, very similar to that. But it's also great for mounting V-mount plates, so you can easily get, you know, a V-mount just put right on the back of the camera, and the cable will plug into that DC port. Onto the left of the camera, this is very similar to other modern Canon cinema cameras, lots of buttons and controls. The big thing to mention here is there is one CF Express B card and one SD card slot. So you don't have dual media. You don't have two CFBs or two SDs, and that will limit the ways that you can dual record because SD cards are not going to be fast enough to record. A lot of the codecs and frame rates that the CF Express cards uh, will be able to record. So a little bit of a bummer there. I would love to have seen two CF Express Type B cards like we see in cameras like the C500 Mark II and C300 Mark III. Just a couple other things to mention. It does have Ethernet, which you saw on the right-hand side. It also has Wi-Fi built in. There's also an OLPF, which is awesome. Canon usually does include that. It does have their normal ND filters, so 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 stops. These are hard stop physical ND filters, unlike the digital ones that are in some of the Sony cameras. There is no IBIS. I was not expecting IBIS in this camera, but there is digital IS, just like all the other Canon cinema cameras. A little bit limiting with the anamorphic support, and this is not surprising. I wish they had done more work on this. You only get the 1.3, 1.8, and two times de-squeezes, and of course, there's no open gate recording. So really no upgrade for the anamorphic support on the C400. Now, I highly recommend you check out CVP's video. I'll leave it linked down below. Jake and his crew did an amazing job with limited time to get as much information out about the camera. They do great testing. Uh, one thing I was really curious about, of course, is dynamic range and the readout speeds. So when they tested the 6K full frame in 17 by nine, they got 13.27 milliseconds. And in the 4.3K Super 35 in 17 by nine, 8.71 milliseconds. So this is decent, but not super fast. And I would love to have seen a faster readout, especially with that stack sensor. But uh, that is what it is. We're not going to get a global shutter. Uh, and that's probably as fast as it could read out the sensor. So CVP also tested the dynamic range of the C400 compared with a bunch of other cameras. It does have less dynamic range than the C300 Mark III and, of course, than the C70 as well, which was definitely kind of a bummer. I think with a new camera and a new sensor, I was hoping for more dynamic range or at least as good dynamic range. But, of course, it doesn't have that dual gain output sensor that's in the C300 Mark III and C70. Now, let's talk about the price because I think that dictates a lot of the discussion here. It is going to be selling for $8,000 here in the United States, and it is available in September, according to B&H. Now, I think the price is absolutely fascinating to me, and I think a lot of people were surprised that it was lower than it was, but I actually am not that surprised by the price based on the fact that there kind of isn't really that much new in this camera. Of course, we have the triple base ISO. We have a 6K full frame sensor with an RF mount. None of this is like super groundbreaking other than the triple base ISO thing. So, I think it is going to be fairly competitive at that price, but I want to talk a little bit to give this into some give some perspective to all this. Is talk about the other releases from Canon, and if you look back at their cinema line, there's been four cameras released. That's kind of their uh, modern cinema camera lineup. We have the C500 Mark II, 
which came out in September of 2019, so almost five years ago. Came out at $16,000, was lowered to $11,000, but it's on sale for $10,000. That has a full frame 5.9K sensor with an EF mount or a PL mount. You could swap those out. And I think in a lot of ways, the C400 is very similar to the C500 Mark II. It's kind of, in some ways, a RF version of the C500 Mark II. There's a couple things the C500 Mark II has over the C400 and vice versa. Uh, there's also the C300 Mark III, which came out in April of 2020. It was starting out at $11,000. They eventually lowered it to $9,000, but it's on sale currently for $8,000. That has that Super 35 4K DGO sensor with an EF mount. Then came the C70 uh, in November of 2020 that kind of made the C300 a tough choice for a lot of people. That was $5,500. It's currently on sale for $5,000. Same sensor as the C300 Mark III, but it has an RF mount. And with all of the firmware updates that they've come out on this camera, it added the raw capabilities and all that stuff and really has made the C70 into a very different camera and even closer to the C300 uh, Mark III. The last camera I want to mention is technically before the C400, Canon's only RF mount full frame cinema camera. And this is, in my opinion, barely a cinema camera, but it is labeled as one and it does run off the cinema operating system. This camera came out in January of 2022 for $4,500. The price went up and down a whole bunch. It's currently sitting at $4,300, but it's on sale for $3,600. This has an 8.2K full frame sensor, of course, with the RF mount. Uh, this is the same sensor as the R5, but it has the C70 operating system for video. And up until this point, like I said, it really was Canon's only full frame RF mount cinema camera from Canon. I am actually, you know, I've been using this camera so much. I've made a lot of content on this channel about it. And it was really interesting because I was looking through my channel and the videos I made. I actually made a video about this camera two years ago and it was titled, The R5C is an important camera. And I think that's true because I think one of the, the coolest things about the Canon system are the beautiful RF full frame lenses. I own a few of them and I don't think I'll ever sell them. I think they're absolutely lovely. And to take full advantage of these, the only camera you could really do that in the cinema operating system was the R5C. So we now we do have the C400, which you can use full frame RF glass. So I'm really confused about where this sits in their current lineup. And I think this might be more telling that the current lineup will be their previous lineup. And then we're gonna get more cameras coming out that will fill this in as they release more cameras. I'm assuming there'll be like a more expensive C500, C600, C700 type camera, and then maybe a cheaper version as well. Maybe like a C70 Mark II or a C90 or maybe a C C200 Mark II or, or something like that. So I'll be really curious about how the rest of their lineup shakes out once they do that. But right now I'm really having trouble deciding where this fits in their lineup. In a lot of ways, I think it's kind of similar to like maybe a C200 Mark II. Maybe this is just like an RF version of the C500 Mark II. Other than the DGO sensor that's in the C300 Mark III, it's kind of similar to the C300 Mark III or even like the C300 Mark II. I know it's a much older camera, but kind of how these cameras are used. We're talking documentary work, corporate work, um, broadcast, like stuff like that. I think in a lot of ways, it's hard for me to see where this fits in. And I think that will become more clear as they release more cameras. Let's talk about some of the competition that's out there because a lot of people are going to be wondering, you know, should I pick up this camera or that camera? And I think we'll learn more as people test it and use this in real, in real life. We have the Sony FX6, which I think is probably the closest competitor to the C400. That camera came out almost four years ago in November of 2020. It's $6,000. Uh, the big advantages for the C400, of course, is it shoots 6K over the 4K that's in this, the FX6 and also can shoot internal RAW. But otherwise, it's not much more than the FX6 in a lot of ways. You could also throw the FX9 in there, although I think for a lot of reasons, the FX6 made the FX9 obsolete and that camera is even a little bit more older uh, than the FX6. We also have the Burano, which is significantly more expensive. I don't think that's really could be in this discussion. We, there's also the Red Komodo and Komodo X. Of course, those are Super 35 sensors. They also have a global shutter and you have that beautiful R3D codec. I think they have slightly different use cases for using the cameras. There's a little bit of overlap, but I really think the C400, like I said earlier, is gonna be really great for corporate work, documentary type stuff, maybe some broadcast where the Komodo X is gonna be great for like narrative and high-end commercial work. We can also bring Black Magic into the conversation here for a second. We can talk about the Pixis, which is coming out soon for $3,000 and the Ursa Cine 12K, which is $15,000. Those are their full frame cinema camera offerings. They do have a lot of other Super 35 cameras in the middle, but I don't think they have something that directly compares with the C400 because the Pixis and the Ursa Cine 12K are kind of on opposite sides of that. So let's get in talking about who this camera's for. 
Um, I think that's really one of the biggest questions uh, to talk about this camera is I think it's mainly for people that are already in the Canon ecosystem, like myself, that have always wanted a full frame RF mount cinema camera. Yes, the R5C is technically in their cinema line, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Like I said, it's going to be great for corporate work, documentaries, etc. I think if I was doing corporate interviews all day long, uh, a pair of C400s or a C400 with maybe a mirrorless camera like a R5C or maybe one of the new newer cameras coming out like the R1 or the R5 II could be a great combination. Um, I think this is the C400 is a very solid camera and I think it will produce amazing work. I think a lot of you guys out there and myself included look at releases from Canon and just really aren't that impressed with the specs. But having used Canon cameras over the years, they are very reliable cameras that always produce really nice images and can be used in a lot of different situations. I personally really enjoy working with them. I was hoping for a bit more with the C400. It seems like there's a lot of old stuff kind of thrown in there with a new sensor uh, with the triple base ISO. But I was hoping for a bigger leap from Canon considering we've been waiting for several years. But... Maybe there's more to come. Like I said, maybe this is the beginning of a whole new lineup of cameras and I can't wait to see what's coming down the line from Canon. So of course, this is my first impressions and thoughts of the announcement, which just happened a few hours ago. So let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Let's have a nice discussion. I appreciate all of you watching. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.